Welcome back to the board of the day where some stranger on the internet tells you what buttons to click on your computer. Today we're going to create a particle transition where you can morph from any 2D vector icon to another. So if you follow me on Instagram you know that I've been playing around with this for a few days now. I think this effect is quite powerful, quite easy to set up and I think it actually might have some interesting use cases. So here we are in Blender version 3.5 and we're going to start out by deleting everything and import an SVG. Where I like to find my SVGs is feathericons.com. These are simply beautiful open source icons. These are amazing. So here you can just pick whatever you want. Yeah, let's do the thumbs up one and then, oh, it's a YouTube icon. Let's do YouTube as well. So now we can go F4, import, scalable vector graphics. Let's go to desktop. And I'm just going to import thumbs up. Nothing happens, but if you remove my stupid face, you can see that up here we have a curve. So let's delete the collection and let's rename this curve to thumbs. Now you can see that this is here, so let's press A to select everything, S to scale it up. And now you can rotate this by 90 degrees on the X axis. And there is our thumb. Now this will be our particle emitter. So let's go to, um, hang on, where's the particle settings? You can't really use a curve as a particle emitter. So this is the one destructive thing that you have to do. The, the emitter has to be a mesh. So you just right click, convert to mesh. So now let's add a particle system. So let's go to particle properties and let's click this little plus icon. Okay, so now you have a particle system, but you have many problems. First of all, why is it down here? And second of all, it's just one line, it's going down, there are many issues. First of all, let's turn off gravity. So let's go to scene properties and let's disable gravity. So now we just go straight forward, it's weird, but... And then let's change the frame end to one. So now all the particles will spawn on frame one. By the way, throughout this video, you're going to see me press tab and then tab again. And that's just a really fast way to reset the entire particle simulation. You just select the emitter and you just go tab tab. So now we have thousand particles in this space just going forward. And we want them to last longer. So let's change the lifetime from 50 to 250, but it's still moving forward. So under velocity, let's change the normal from one to zero meters per second. So now we have a particle standing still. And now if you change the source of the particle emitter to be emit from faces to vertices, you can see that we have, tab tab, we have our particle emitter. Here's a problem. This is emitting based on vertices and we have an uneven placement of vertices. You have a bunch here, we have no one here. So to clean this up, simply select this line, right click subdivide, and then you can bring up this menu, you can just make some value and you can take this one and subdivide that and then this one subdivide and then this one subdivide. And then, yeah, and then press A to select everything and subdivide everything like 10 times. And now you can see that there's still some uneven spacing here. Here we have like five and there we are like two. This can be fixed with one button click and that is F4, preferences, loop tools, these, these are a lot of button clicks, <laughs> more than one at least. Under add-ons, just search for loop tools, like this, and enable that so now you can select everything, right click, loop tools, space. And this just evenly sorts this out. So the boring part is over, now we have an even distribution of particles on our emitter. Let's do some simulation. Oh, and we also want to save this. So to simulate this, we're gonna have to add some forces. Now when you press space, we have done a lot of stuff to make sure that this just stands perfectly still. So let's add a force field. Let's go shift A and let's add a force field turbulence. And now when you press play, you have turbulence. I mean, this is a cool effect by itself, but the whole magic here is to make this thumb icon behave like this for a little while and then snap into a different shape. And now let's import the other model. So let's go F4, import scalable vector graphics, and let's go YouTube. Now, if I turn off my stupid face again, now you can see that we have two objects here and you can scale this up. And now you can press Control J to join this. So now it's just one curve and let's call this YouTube. And I wanna delete this collection and let's uh, line this up. And now what I wanna do is that I wanna turn this icon into a force field. So luckily that's just one click under physics properties, let's just click force field. So now when you press play, this doesn't really work. And that's because you have to change the shape from point to curve. And now let's just get rid of this turbulence force field for a moment, because I just want to see how these interact together. So now this looks really weird, but we're onto something. Let's change the strength of the YouTube icon to minus four. 
Look at that. Now you can see where we're going with this. We can see maybe some shapes. And let's try and increase the flow. Look at that. You see this? This is the effect coming together. Now we're at the important part of this tutorial where we could together be tweaking these settings and having a lot of fun. But the truth is, this is a bit difficult to dial in on first try. So I have just prepared some values that I know are really nice. So I'm just gonna save us all some time and then just tell you what are some good values for strength and flow with the current setup and scaling and the thing that we have right now. So I wanna start on frame 20 and I wanna set both the strength and the flow to zero and I wanna add keyframes to these values. So hold your mouse over strength and press I and then hold your mouse over flow and press I. So now we have added keyframes to both of these. Let's go to frame 40 and let's change the strength to four and let's change the flow to minus 10 and then press I and I again. So now you can see this is going to look really weird because uh, I forgot to make sure that the strength is minus four. Okay, so I messed this up. It's plus 10 flow and minus 10 strength. I'm so glad I prepared these numbers. Okay, so this looks slow and boring, but this is, this is a good thing, okay? So I wanna split this in half. You can also right click down here and go vertical split. And I wanna change this to graph editor. Press N to get rid of this menu. And here's what we wanna do. On frame 60, we wanna add a new keyframe for the strength. We want the strength to be zero at frame 60. So basically it's going to look like this. Okay, that's weird. But here's where you can start tweaking this. This bottom keyframe line can be pulled down like this and then you're increasing the strength of the force field. And then by changing the position of this top keyframe, you are changing the flow, which I mean, I could try and describe what the flow does, but it's one of those things that you just have to play around with it and get a gut feeling on what it is. It's basically some sort of drag in the air. So let's move the flow over here a little bit and scale this up. Okay, yeah, we're getting this rubber effect. You see that? I like that. So what's happening here is that we're, we're turning on, here we're at zero strength of the force field, and then at frame 38 or something, the strength of the force field is like minus 11, and then it goes back to zero while the flow is increasing. Why does this work? I don't know. I've spent hours trying to figure this out and these are the settings that worked, <laughs> don't ask me. Okay, but now the problem with this animation, see this, it's such a geometric shape just being pulled right up there. We wanna spice things up. We wanna rip stuff apart so they can collide back together again. So let's add another force field and the turbulence. Let's bring back the turbulence force field. Let's try and see what this looks like. Yeah, we're onto something here. We need to make a stronger turbulence force field. Let's try a strength of five. Yeah, I don't want this to start just like out of nowhere. I want the turbulence force field to start over here and then just move over here like that. So now instead of animating the strength value of this force field, the turbulence force field, I wanna just move it out of the way and then I wanna use something called max distance. You can increase it like this. So now when you press play, there's no force field but we can add a keyframe on its location. So I to insert location keyframe and then let's move uh, 30 frames and let's press G and X to move it over here on the X axis and then press I to insert another keyframe and then location. So now this will move over like that and it needs to be much stronger. Let's give it a strength of 15. See that? Now it's sort of, it's moving through, right? And we can also increase the scale just a little bit. You see this? See this line here, this thing? That's because every frame, the turbulence force field is affecting this on the same location. So it's like all of these places are getting the same treatment with the turbulence force field. But to get rid of this pattern, you can enable global coordinates. And now when you press play, it's a lot more violent turbulence force field. And also I don't want to have easing on this force field. So let's just select the turbulence keyframes and press T and linear. So now it will just linearly move over there. And I want to lower the strength a little bit to maybe eight. I'm still not super happy about this. Oh, I feel like it's moving too slow. Let's try and speed up the simulation. So let's select the particle emitter and let's go to particle properties and under physics and integration, you can change this time step from 0.04 to 0.08. We're basically making it twice as fast. Yeah, okay, I can work with this. So let's dial down the strength of the turbulence force field and let's actually change the size of the turbulence and this value is a little bit weird because when the size is set to zero, that's the same as having the size set to one. Don't ask me how that works. So let's set the size to 0.6 or something. So it's almost half the size. Oh, that's nice. Let's do uh, 
Yeah, and then let's make it move faster. Look at this. I want to activate the YouTube force field a little bit earlier. Let's uh, press A to select it and move it on the x-axis. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so now I'm going to address a problem that is a little bit advanced of a concept, but I'm gonna try anyways. You see all these vertices that are placing these particles. If you go to the scene statistics down here, you can see that this thumb is 2300 vertices. So the problem is, if we in our particle system set our particle number to 10,000, there are going to be more particles than there are vertices on this object. So that means that there are going to be particles with the exact same positional data. And the problem with that is that this turbulence force field is affecting them based on where they currently are. So if they have the exact same position, it's very often that they just, they never get ripped apart. But there is one feature that seems to be communicating with the some quantum level spatial thing in the particles, and that is in the physics properties, you can increase the noise amount. This seemed to communicate on a higher level or something. I don't know. I don't really know how this works, but I've been tweaking these sliders a lot and I just, I just want someone to talk to about it. <laughs> ah, that sounds so lonely. So let's try and set the noise amount to two. Hmm, that doesn't really do that much. Maybe let's set the noise amount to five. Yeah, but it's, this is basically like pure randomness. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like this. So now we have this animation where a thumb is turning into a YouTube icon, but what's really, really cool about this workflow is that now we can head back over to the icon website and we can scroll down and we can find... Uh, oh, this is gonna be perfect. Let's do the bell icon. So now let's go F4, import SVG. And let's go bell. You can probably guess where this is going. Scale it up, you can rotate it. So now, how do we transition this icon animation into hitting the bell? It's quite easy actually. So let's select the bell and let's go to physics properties and let's make this into a force field as well. And now you wanna go to the first frame of the animation and you wanna insert keyframes. So let's press I on strength and I on flow. And here's the deal. Once you have inserted keyframes on this channel, now you can copy keyframes from the other ones. So let's go to the YouTube and now let's select all the keyframes here by pressing A and then control C and then let's select the bell and go control V. So now you can press G and X and move this further away. So the YouTube ends on frame 51 and then this starts on frame 51. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to do before duplicating these keyframes, hang on, let me delete this, is to select the YouTube keyframes and on the last frame, you have to add new keyframes that have a value of zero. So on frame 53, I'm gonna set the flow back to zero. So now here are what the YouTube keyframes look like. They start at zero and they do the thing and they end up at zero with this hard transition here at the end. And this is important because that means that the YouTube force field won't be interacting when the bell force field enables. So let's uh, add new keyframes to the bell force field. Doesn't matter what these value are and select the YouTube, select everything, control C, make sure you're on the first frame Go to the bell and control V and now you can move this over so it starts after. Okay, now let's see if that worked. That didn't work because we forgot to set the bell to curve. So now let's try again. Okay, nice. The bell icon is a bad icon because it has like these weird lines so it will almost always end up being like not complete because the particles are sliding around and yeah it's a little bit weird yeah we want to mess this up again so right before this activates we want to take the force field i and insert location and we want to move this over to the other side again okay so now you can see at the end of this yeah there's a gap here okay now here's the sad part of this tutorial i haven't yet figured out a super reliable way to make sure that there are never places like this so what i often end up doing is i select the force field and maybe you can change the seed and then you can just instantly do another simulation because that just it, it's basically real time so yeah now it's a little bit better right and then you can select the particle emitter the thumb and then you can go to particle properties and you can maybe increase the amount of particles so Instead of 10,000, let's do 50,000. We can also, it, sometimes it also helps to increase the noise amount. Maybe we can do a new seed like that. Yeah, that works. So now if I set my viewport to render view, I'm working in cycles, by the way, and I'm turning off the overlays, you can't really see anything. And that's because we only have a particle system. We have not yet assigned a 3D model to be one of these particles. So for this object, I wanna use a sphere. So let's go Shift A and let's add a icosphere. And I wanna right click, set the shading to smooth. And I wanna press F2 and I wanna rename this to 
particle. So now if you set this to render view, we can see the particle. And that's actually a problem. We don't want to see this particle in our final render. We want to see the instanced version of it. We don't want to see this original. So let's press M for move to new collection. And let's make a new collection and call this particle object. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what this is called. Now what you want to do, you want to go to material properties and you want to give this particle a new material. I don't want to call this particle material. And you can set the surface to emission. And now to hide this particle from the final render, go to the outliner and let's disable this camera so now it will not show up in the render view. And I also like to just disable it completely so we don't accidentally do stuff to it. So now you can select your particle emitter again. And even if we will not see the emitter, I like to assign the particle material to the emitter because it's much easier to access it here than to open that hidden collection all the time. But we're still just seeing these particles. So let's go to the particle properties and let's go down to render. And instead of render as halo, let's set it to render as object. And let's set instance object to particle. So now you can see we have some particles which are hidden because we haven't really... Oh yeah, this is a big problem with Blender 3.5. Look at this, it just says updating lights and it just says this forever. Okay, so to fix this is that for some reason you have to go to render properties and under lights you have to enable light tree. Don't ask me why, that just does it. For some reason now it's much faster. Now we have our particles visible in the viewport. But one thing that I don't like about this is that these are all placed the same. We wanna add some randomness to this. So let's go back to particle properties and let's enable rotation. And then you can randomize rotation like this. And then you can also scroll down to scale and you can increase the scale randomness if you want a little bit of a random scale. Now you can see the particles in the render view. So let's add some shading to this. So let's set this editor type to shader editor. And first of all, make sure you're in cycles because we're going to use a node called particle info node. And this particle info node has a bunch of cool attributes that we can get from the particle system. So for example, you can do random and then every particle will have a random value and you can have age and index and a bunch of cool stuff. And what we are going to use is the velocity attribute. So let's just click and drag this into the color and now you can see that these are vector data of the velocity. But I think this looks a little bit weird. So let's go shift A converter, separate x, y, z. And now we got the x, y, and z values. So I can just use a math add, adding all these together and then adding these together. And you want to make sure you have clamping enabled so you don't have any negative values. And then you can hold on control and let's change this to the strength instead. Okay, so now the more velocity each particle has, the brighter they will light up, which I think is a really cool effect. And quite technically, we're not doing this completely correct because there are some negative values here that are being forgotten, but I think this looks quite cool. So I'm gonna keep it like this. And now to make things a little bit easier going forward, we're going to bake the particle system just so it's saved. How long does this last? It's uh, 100 frames. Yeah, let's do 100 frames. So let's go to the particle properties, cache, and let's set the end frame to 100. And then I wanna click bake. So now our particle system is saved. Okay, so now let's make this a little bit more interesting. I wanna add some color. So this is the velocity which controls the strength and I'm going to input an RGB node like this. And I wanna increase the strength a little bit more. So let's just duplicate this and let's set it to multiply by five. So now you can give this a spicy color, which is, uh, let's try this. And now I don't really like that these particles are just completely pitch black when there's no light on them. So I want to use an add shader, shader add, and I want to just give it a diffuse material. Look at this. Now the particles are lighting up these ones. I think this looks really cool. And I want to lower the world background to, for now. Okay, yeah, so this is looking really cool already. I think I want to render this out. So let's make a camera, shift a camera, and let's press control alt num at zero to make sure that we're viewing this from the camera view. And to move the camera further back, press G and then Z two times. Yeah, I think that's cool. Hang on, why aren't we, why aren't they going pitch black? They should be doing that. Perhaps we need to make the particle simulation longer. Yeah, let's um, set the end frame to 130 and let's just bake again. And maybe this will help. Nope, still a weird color. Okay, well, I'll just manually keyframe it black then. So it stops right here. And now let's insert keyframe on the multiply and let's go to frame 100 and then just turn it off. Yeah, that's cool. So I'll just view this from the camera view and I want to add a light. So let's go shift A and let's add an area light. Let's place this above like this and let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's view it from the camera by pressing numpad zero. Let's set the light power to 40 watts. Now to add some depth of field, just right click, 
depth of field distance, set it to there, and then click depth of field, and I want to use really narrow, like 0.05. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, maybe we should add like a background. Yeah, let's add a gradient background. I always do this. Okay. Yeah, that's a smooth gradient, and let's lower the strength, 0.1. Okay, nice. Now I want to add some little bit of glow to this. Let's go to the compositor and enable use nodes, backdrop. And I'm just going to use the same node setup I always use. And now let's do a render and we should get motion blur as well. Yeah, this is looking really cool already. Okay, so let me just do the final render in a low quality. I'm going to render straight to video because I'm impatient. Straight to mp4 let's do 256 samples and under performance performance persistent data control f12 and let's try it so while we're rendering if you like you can check out my patreon this is the most popular one because you get access to all my project files and uh, this thing is pretty cool if you thought this video was a little bit fast a little bit too conceptual i am making a longer more comprehensive probably more boring video on the second channel, but it will cover all the steps and it will answer your questions. And it will also explore some other ideas and concepts that I think are a little bit more interesting. So that's it. Now I'm gonna show you the final result as well as some of the concepts I've been working on when developing this technique. Thanks for watching, see you later.